talking about wiped cams on every single engine but mostly focusing on the 2ZZ GE. The 2ZZ has a major problem with oiling and that is only normal to have wiped cams for the most of us. Let's get started with how you can understand, feel, here that you have a wiped cam. Unfortunately, there are no clear signs as soon as the engine sounds normal, it drives normal until it's really really bad and most of the time it feels normal. You lose some power that you can only feel it on the dyno and eventually if you don't have completely destroyed cams and rocker arms, uh, you can't feel anything else. Now, if you have major issues, you will uh, feel significant misfires sometimes and yeah, you will definitely go check that out. Let's say that you have uh, a feeling that you might have white cams, how can you guarantee, see, inspect and get it to get 100% like I have a problem, let's see what it is. Go outside, open your engine bay, take the valve cover off and that's it. You remove the 10 millimeters and you inspect the camshafts. On the 2ZZG you have one exhaust and one intake cam. There are cars with a single cam and there are cars that have, have the camshaft uh, not on the top of the engine, but in the middle, I think it's some American muscle cars and different cars, old cars, I'm not sure. Let's not get any deeper on that topic. You open the camshafts, the valve cover basically. The intake one is the one that has the VVT gear on it and it's basically on the side of the intake if you didn't know and the exhaust one is close to your headers. Now, most of the time, your exhaust one will be in great shape, so, so that's a good way to compare a good to a bad cam. If your exhaust one feels and looks like the intake one, you're most likely okay. To not get any misunderstandings, some people might have exhaust cam wiped and uh, that's why you have to get into deeper inspection. Check your cam, most of the time the high-low because you have the high and the low one, the non vtec and the VTEC, basically LEAF but I'm calling it VTEC for everyone to understand. For the B-series, K-series guys as well, they get the same issues most of the time with the exhaust one. Now why it happens on the intake one? Why it doesn't happen on both of them? So basically in the 2ZZG you have a small tube that gets the oil with pressure inside the valve cover and the valve cover has a small line of shower. Basically all the pressure comes in and then the highest pressure drops showers the fourth cylinder cam, yeah, fourth cylinder goes to the third one, second one, first one. There are little showers. Then it makes a small loop here, goes to the first one intake, second one intake, third one intake, and goes to the fourth one intake. So basically, there is a big difference of oil pressure from the first shower to the last shower, and uh, unfortunately, that's where the major problem begins. Uh, you get good pressure on the first shower you get. A little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less, you lose on the loop, you go to the intake side, you've already lost some pressure, and then you lose again, you lose again, you lose again into the fourth one, sometimes the fourth one doesn't get enough oil, are there any ways to prevent it? Me personally, I use 10W60 oil, uh, and that's a really big debate as of am I doing any good to the engine, because yeah, I'm actually saving my cams, even though I got wiped cams as I bought the engine, and I don't really know what type of oil the previous owner used, but from the day I used 10W60, my wiped cams stayed as wiped as they were, they didn't get any worse, uh, the car was drivable as I said, it was perfectly fine, I even raced it, all the videos you see me racing on the 2ZZG compilation video, it's with white cam, white, sorry, not white. Let's say that you open the cam, you see the camshafts. Before we actually get into the camshaft, something that I forgot to say about preventing the white cams, uh, some people have posted extra showers. They get a line, really tricky part that I can't do myself and I don't know if you can, it's a little bit tricky to have another not OEM tube going all around the camshafts having an extra shower that eventually steals some pressure off your oil system and drops a little bit more to overfills somehow the head with oil. Uh, some people say they had uh, great results, me personally, for now, I just switch them with uh, OEM used ones and let's see how well it will go. This is an exhaust side camshaft, but it, this is the best uh, uh, example I could get to great camshafts. That's how your camshafts are supposed to look like, intake and exhaust, there is no difference. Shiny, no sharp edges, literally nothing, I cannot feel anything, maybe you can see that there is a brown line or black one right here and then it gets grey, but no, I can 
not feel anything my fingernail is not getting stuck in between anything it's completely polished it's completely straight there is nothing to feel that's a completely perfect cam and that's most of the time the case with the exhaust one they don't get wiped they have great oil pressure great oil feel and they don't get wiped now let's see what the bad ones look like that's my intake one that's the fourth third second and first so the fourth one to have a clear view of how bad a cam can get you can see in between these black areas the edges there is a significant drop here and with your fingernail you can feel it here that it has a different slope it goes and then it kind of drops here and look at that i don't know if you can hear it it literally catches on it like i cannot bypass it by any means catches and it hits that's a wiped cam and that's severely wiped if you have anything like that trust me you better off swapping them as soon as possible now my third one is not as bad with your eye you can see like it has all these marks on the top of the on the edges and then a little bit on the bottom that's where the cam actually leaves off because the camshaft is spinning that way okay it's hitting on the rocker arm and then eventually as it leaves the rocker kind of scraps on the edge of it uh, my second one is again wiped but it doesn't really catch my fingernail like it's not really severely it's not really really bad but once you see them unfortunately there is no going back they will slowly slowly get worse and reach to this and as you can see my first one is completely trashed it catches the nail clearly you can see it. let me show you you can stop pause the video if the camera is focusing i really wish it does and you can see here that there is like a great line here on the two edges and then how deeper the actual camshaft is this is the part that clicks that pushes down the rocker arm not these two edges that's why you can see it getting wiped here why toyota why what did go wrong with the whole system this thing is actually dangerous because slowly slowly you might think where did the actual material go where is the material you lost it it's not here anymore it was like that or like the good one that i showed you previously and then suddenly you're missing that uh, thankfully it's nothing more than powder and uh, you shall be really unlucky to see junk of uh, camshaft in your engine bay that means literal disaster that's it the engine is over I'm not trying to scare you but unfortunately that's the case but with the uh, camshafts uh, you get powder that powder is so small you might not even see it feel it or anything some people say uh, with severely wiped cams on all four cylinders they took their oil pan out they saw some glitter on the bottom of the pan like dirt with glitter a shiny glitter and that their engine still survived a, a ton more miles and it was completely fine it's definitely a great idea to swap them because they are dangerous and they can do catastrophic damages to your engine but don't worry i was driving the car like that racing it not on track be aware if you would go to a track day with those camshafts i'm not 100 percent sure if you would survive or if the engine would be scrapped i'm not sure i don't know i cannot answer that question any other question by the way you can answer it on the comment section i will answer as quick as possible let's get to the rocker arms that's the part that many people do not know they think that the camshaft gets damaged by completely itself bad oiling thin oil high revs overheating the oil that's a very big concern if you overheat the oil eventually you lose the viscosity of the oil if you use 10w40 and you go over the oil's uh, operating temp you suddenly make it uh, 10w33 34 35 you're dropping the viscosity eventually having water-like substance not covering not protecting anything not only your cams literally anything bearings engine every single component that is supposed to get lubricated those are mechanical rocker arms that's how the 2ZZG works now some cars have hydraulic rocker arms and Toyota went with mechanic ones okay this is the roller nothing to worry about here nothing to inspect and this is the high cam uh, lifter I don't know how you're supposed to call it this thing actually 
rotates, gets pushed by the camshaft, it's really slippery with the oil, and before it reaches a certain RPM set for the VTEC lift kicking, uh, it doesn't do anything, it just gets pushed on, there is nothing holding it back, the camshaft has no problem clicking it, and once you, uh, let's say, get to the crossover point, 6.2K, uh, for most of the stock uh, ECUs, it's get locked by a pin here with the oil pressure and that's when the high cam actually presses that and gets the whole thing pressed down to open the valves wider and for more duration. This is wiped but not severely so you might not even see it, I do see it, but for you it might feel like a completely great rocker arm. Now you see how it goes, there is small wipe here like it's it's grinded with something but it's so little that you might not even see uh, I have a picture that I will show you right here right here right here I don't know I'm not the best editor maybe here there is it you see it that's a great one let's make it bigger completely healthy rocker arm and uh, that's the one that I've installed currently in my car let me show you a completely white one now this one is really bad can you see the difference from the one that I showed you in the picture with this one I don't know if the camera is actually focusing I really wish it does but can you see it right here how this edge goes towards like the high edge and then it suddenly drops here now if you put not your fingernail you don't even need to put your fingernail your finger and you do that it is like it's a razor it's about to cut off my flesh it's really really I cannot even explain it and I don't know if you can see the marks here, like the scratch marks. This is wiped and this is trashed. Now, you obviously have to swap all your rocker arms when you have, not all, I'm sorry, you have to uh, swap your, the rocker arms that are wiped with the cam. If you see like a wiped cam, you swap the rocker arm beneath it. The thing is that the problem starts with from the, some people don't know that the problem actually comes from these guys. If you have a lot of money, you buy Ferrea rocker arms and you never ever have to worry about wiped cams. That's it, it's over. The thing here is that Toyota actually used very small, really thin material here and it didn't really even go to this edge. You can see how it stays here. Basically, the camshaft rotates, clicks, pushes this down, slowly eats this area, and once this area is eaten, the material underneath is really, really hard for the cam to work on. So, you first eat the rocker arm, and then your camshaft slowly grinds right here. Think of it as a cam, okay? It hits here, pushes it, and once it goes to leave, like rotate out, it actually licks this area that's really, really harder than it's supposed to be on the top, and then it suddenly gets eaten. Those guys are the problem and at least parts had solved this issue with a replace pad. Unfortunately, they don't sell those anymore. I sent them a message, tried to get uh, four of them for me, but unfortunately, no, they don't have them. They are discontinued. You basically would take that spring off, remove that pad off, and you get a wider and a longer area, a longer pad, for the camshaft to work on. Those are completely trash. I don't know why Toyota went with that. That's completely reasonless. Nobody ever understood what's the case with those. Those are the main problem again. And if you see a wiped cam, don't even inspect those. You see a wiped cam on cylinder two, okay? You swap the rocker arm. You will eventually wear the cam again. If it's a worn cam there, it means that the rocker has the strict hard material, it, it even looks a little bit different, it's a little bit grayish, uh, and that material eventually eats on the cam. As I said, this thing goes to almost every single engine that is high revving. Most of the time high revving engines have uh, that problem, for example the K-series gets uh, wiped and grinded uh, exhaust uh, camshaft, and I do think the same happens with B-series, and every single engine besides obviously rotary that they don't have camshafts like you guys you got something like you there but i mean they have way more and different problems than we do let's talk about preventation and maintenance now for example you go the route i did and you remove the camshafts remove the rocker arms and install four used one and uh, one used camshaft 
Uh, me personally, I did that yesterday. The car drives perfectly fine. I haven't tuned it yet. I'm running on an ECU Master uh, aftermarket standalone. I seen better respawn, and I don't know if that has to do anything with the cams because I did actually fix some issues on my head, not this head, but the engine head. The best thing you can do if you have money is go buy with uh, 650, 750, I don't know exact amount is. Uh, a camshaft from uh, Toyota OEM and get four rocker arms. Unfortunately, it's really expensive and you cannot get only one or two rocker arms. You're gonna have to get all four of them and the camshafts. They don't sell anything uh, by itself. It, go, it all goes as a package, nothing separately. And that's the best thing you can do. Swap all four brand new and brand new camshaft and you shall be okay till you rewipe it with something that you've done wrong. And that's where the maintenance thing kicks in. Thicker oil makes safer. Now the thing is you actually have to warm your engine perfectly. Do not race or go in lift when the engine is not at perfect operating temperature. That's one big reason that you eat your camshafts. Uh, don't go too thin. If you go too thin, don't drive your car too crazy, okay? You go too crazy with thin oil, you eventually get wiped cams. That's another rule. Now for me, maybe it's a little bit extreme going with 10W60, but I'm doing it and so far I'm really happy and let's see how happy I will stay with these uh, new camshafts that I got. Upgrade, a better upgrade, is to go stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 camshafts. Obviously you cannot go stage 3 or even stage 2 without upgrading your head with uh, uh, retainers and springs. But if you go that route, you basically get stronger camshafts and uh, they get hard, it's really hard to eat them. But again, if you're stupid and you go too thin and you don't have upgraded rocker arms, as I said with the Ferrea ones, uh, you will still wipe those too. Again, I, I have seen MWR camshafts getting wiped because of wrong oil. About the oil feed, I told you, if you're a risky guy and you want to work on it, you can steal some pressure from the pump that I, it's not actually a pump, it's a plug that gets into the head and goes to the valve cover. You can steal some pressure from that area and make an extra shower. Maybe you don't even shower the exhaust ones. Your exhaust ones are fine. Just get a tube that goes the exact route in between and goes to the intake and showers the intake side. Maybe that's a solution for you. It's something that I wouldn't risk doing. High RPMs, something shakes, something cracks, something is not correctly welded or installed and from wiped cams you get a wiped engine. That's it. Eventually, the main problem is high revving, bad oiling. If you don't rev it high and you don't uh, use bad oil too thin, you shall not have this problem. Now, if you race it, that's a different story. You race it, you use a little bit thicker oil, you uh, warm your engine, you warm your oil with an oil temp gauge, uh, you shall be perfectly fine. But there are still so many things to talk about and I will be here to fix the issues on my car, on my engine, and then bring you the camshafts as I did today and show you the exact problem and what exactly happens inside your engine. Uh, I really wish that I helped you with this video. I really wish it's not completely boring. Uh, I'm trying my best with the editing part and uh, I really wish you enjoyed and learned one thing or two about wiped cams on the 2ZZG engine. Thank you for watching guys and I will see you next time. Bye bye.